but I'm excited about today. I hope that you've enjoyed our praise and worship. Today what I want to do is I want to continue with the series of After Easter. This will be the last, um, last sermon out of this series, but it's, about, it's After Easter and it's entitled Coming Again. My friends, listen to me. I want to share with you this. Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen? Jesus is coming. And that's what I want to talk about uh, this morning with the great event uh, after Easter. I want you to take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the book of Acts chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 6 through 11. And so I I look forward to uh, sharing this text with you. Now, this is Jesus. He had already been walking around. He'd been talking. He was resurrected, and, and he's seen by a whole lot of people. And this is the last time for them to see him on this earth physically. And starting in verse 6, it says, Therefore, when they had come together, they had asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the time nor the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. While While they looked on steadfastly toward heaven, As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Father, we love you for today. We thank you for everything you've done. And God, thank you again for this time of praise and worship that we've had together. And Lord, now as we continue with this word, I pray that everything that I say, everything that I do will be an honoring to you. And God, I pray that this is, these words are not my words, but these will be your words that are shared. It's not my message, but your message. And I pray, Father, the response would be as you desire for it to be. And God, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. There's three parts to this that I want us to look at, knowing with the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. The first one is the ascension. This was an amazing sight to see. As a matter of fact, what, these guys had saw Jesus and, and he had been walking with them and talking with them and, and he was taken up into heaven. It was an amazing thing for them to see. My friends, can I share with you today, Jesus Christ, God himself, shows us an amazing view of life. Amen? He is, listen to me, God is an amazing God. Everything, listen, everything that he does is amazing. And so he reveals this to us. As a matter of fact, the book of Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 and 4 says this. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him? The psalmist here is saying, man, I look around and I even see up in the heavens. I see amazing things and, and it's, it's, I admire God's handiwork. Man, we see here every day, every time we have life, every time we have a sunrise, a sunset, I think we've gotten so used to all the amazing things of God, they don't amaze us anymore. But I think if we would just step back and, and, and look at it and as a child and see all the great things, man, one of the amazing things that I get to do as a pastor is when someone uh, in, our, in our church has a, has a baby, one of the great privileges I have is I try within the day or so to get over to the hospital and I love praying over those babies, man. And because it is just an amazing thing for me to to see God has done something wonderful here. And so it says that they saw an amazing sight. Now I want you to think, they had seen amazing works from God before. They had seen healings. They had seen people raised from the dead. They had seen walking on the water. They had seen feeding of the multitudes. They, They saw the resurrection. And this was still one more amazing event that they're, in the past three years, they have been witness to some amazing stuff. And the Bible even says in John 21, 25, and there are also so many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written down on by, one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the, the, the books that would be written. Amen. So we see that the the Bible talks about all the amazing things that Jesus did. And men, here they are, they're getting to watch another amazing event. Something they had never 
seen before. So the ascension was not just an amazing sight, but it was an amazing testimony. It was an amazing testimony that Jesus had just given them out. My friends, there was a reason that he didn't do this in private. There was a reason that he didn't just say, you know what, guys, I'm leaving. And then he'd walk away and somewhere off out by himself, he ascended. I believe it was a great testimony for the apostles to say, see what I have been able to do to confirm everything that Jesus had said to them. Because it was just adding icing to the cake. And it was just one more thing that they were able to watch Jesus do. And my friends, he says now that you are called to go and have that testimony. But Jesus did it out where it, people could see and there could be no doubt what took place. So it was an amazing sight and it was an amazing testimony. But also what else happened there, number two, it was a task. I want to look at the task. When, when this great event happened, just like whenever I shared with you that I walked into Graceland, Man, it was, it, I, I could have I stood there for days, walked in, and I could have spent hours just looking and, at certain things and stood there. And what was amazing is when I got in there the very first time, I just stared. And like I said, people were kind of getting a little annoyed with me, trying to get me to move on. They'd walk around me, and I'm just sitting there, and man, I'd play, I'd hit this little thing. They'd tell me about the piano. They'd tell me about the couch. They'd tell me about, I wanted to know everything. I was just standing there in awe. Well, these guys were doing the same thing, and I almost forgot why I was there. The men who watched Jesus do all the great works, they watched him ascend to heaven, and they almost forgot why they were there. It was such an amazing testimony that the angels had to come and say, hey, guys, why are you just standing here looking up? Now's the time for you to get busy. The task at hand, what he told them, he says, don't just sit around watching. Don't just sit here. Now's the time to take action. Why are you just standing here? My friends, listen to me. In these type times that we're living in today, it's real easy for us as Christians to say, you know what, it's time to just sit back a little bit. It's time to not do much. There's, there's a whole lot of new stuff we're having to do, a lot of new work we're having to put in. It's time to just step back. Listen, I believe God is calling the church to step up, not step back. I believe he has given us a task to reach people for Jesus like we've never reached them before. Don't just stand around being afraid of what's going on, be uncertain of what's going on, be, be, be confused by what's going on, or just even be doubting what's going on. He says it is a, there is a task at hand for the church. We have seen God do some amazing things. My friends, listen, church, Christians, we cannot forget why we're here. We must continue to give that testimony. Don't just sit back watching. Then he tells us them to spread the word. If you look back up in verse 8, Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. Witnesses. You need to go out and tell what I have done for you what God has been able to do in your life, you must now go out and all of these things that you've seen, and, and, and I, he didn't give them, a, I don't think he gave him a hint to what they were about to see. He said, and you'll see power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you with what you're about to see and go out and tell people all that Jesus has done for you. So after Easter, what God has told the church is you are to now be my witnesses. Don't sit back. Go tell everyone about the goodness of God. Take, take the opportunity that God has given each one of us to be able now to share that word. Man, give praise. Do you realize the praise team up here today? They just bore witness to the magnificence of God. You at home, if you were, if you were singing along with us, you just gave a witness to the greatness of God. And now we're to leave from here and share the word. Jesus told them, you will be my witnesses 
of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He said, man, this word is to spread out because it is an amazing word. But not only do we have the ascension, not only do we have the task, but here's what I really wanted to focus in on on the last few minutes here. I want to focus in on the promise. The promise. The promise that the angels gave to them at that moment. He said, or they said to him, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, not a different one, not another Messiah, but this same Jesus who was with you, has been with you for the last three years, who has watched, you have watched him do some amazing things. He has taught you, he has promised you things. That same Jesus who left now, listen to what they say, who was taken up from, from you into heaven, will so come again like manner as you saw him go. You know what they're told him? Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. You have seen this, and what you just saw, this ascension, we do it as a, he did it as a testimony because that's the way he's coming back. So just as he left in the clouds, there's going to come a day, and my friends, I believe it's coming soon, that Jesus, that same Jesus that we read about, that same Jesus that we see movies about, that same Jesus whom we tell, hear stories about, that same Jesus who died on the cross for us will come again just like that. He is coming again. Jesus said in John 14, he says, I go to prepare, he says, I don't want you to be scared or afraid. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, here's the promise. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So he's already promised them, guys, I'm going. And he, and he told them before that, he said, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I got, I, they're, they're in my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't like that, I would tell you because Jesus never hid anything from us. Jesus promised, my friend, that he is coming again. And I hear, I'm here to tell you today that that same Jesus is at the right hand of the Father now making intercession for us. And he will hear one day, Jesus, go and get my children. Jesus, go and bring them back. Jesus, go get them so that that same Jesus that, that is now in heaven, we will get to be with him forever and ever and ever. If, if we accept him and as our Lord and Savior and receive him into our lives and claim him to be the Messiah. But I want to tell you something else. Not only is Jesus coming again, but my friends, the second part is he will come back as a king. This same Jesus who left out is not coming back again as a baby. He's not coming back as a good teacher. He's not coming back as a prophet. The Bible says that he is coming back as the king. He's not going to ride in on a donkey like we talked about just a few weeks ago. The Bible tells us over in, in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 11, it says this. Now I, John, saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And who, who sat on him was called faithful and true and righteous. He judges and makes war. My friends, it's going to be different than when he came in. It's not going to be as a baby again. They will not have any any control over Jesus he will not be arrested again he will not be nailed on the cross again he will not be crucified he will not be put into a tomb the Bible says he's coming back not on a peaceful donkey he's coming back on a white horse to represent royalty purity power and he is going to come and he's going to claim all of this for his Are you ready for this same Jesus and I'm telling you it's not a joke this isn't a fairy tale this is absolutely true. We have seen it over and over written in the scriptures. We know that it's playing out. The prophecies are now being fulfilled. We see that Jesus Christ is ready and he's going to come again. Now, my friends, are you ready? There's two things in this, this invitation that we're about to get into. Two things that I want us to know. First of all, do you know that you have Jesus in your heart? 
Do you know there was a time in your life that you said, God, I know that I'm, I need you. I know that apart from my own, I have no hope. And I believe that Jesus Christ was born a virgin, of a virgin. I believe that he was walking on this earth. I believe he taught. I believe that he did great miracles. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he was put in the tomb. I believe that he was raised again after three days. I believe that he ascended into heaven. And I believe that he's at the right hand of God today. I believe that he is coming back again. And I believe that one day we're all going to meet him. I believe. I believe. My friends, have you ever received that into your life? Have you ever received Jesus? Then I want to encourage you during these next few moments, you're going to have an opportunity to receive Jesus. But also, for those who know Jesus, the second thing, I want to know what does he mean to you? I want you to know that he is your personal Lord and Savior. I want want you to know that, that he is your number one. I want you to know in your life that you are now not standing around, staring around, looking at the th- situations around us, saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, but that you are now receiving the power and you are witnessing for him in this world, testifying about the goodness and the power of God Almighty. And you're having that right relationship with him. Maybe today you're sitting here and saying, man, I'm, I'm, I feel like one of those, I feel like one of those apostles. And if an angel was to stand next to me, he'd say, hey, why are you just standing here? Why are you not doing something? Why are you, why are you confused? Why are you in amazement by what's going on around you? But you say today, man, I want to be fulfilling the witnessing that God has placed upon me as a Christian. Maybe it's through the church by following in believers' baptism. Maybe it's joining the church maybe it's surrendering to the ministry maybe it's helping out in the ministries of the church not necessarily even this church but whatever church you may be a part of right now that you could be doing that those are the two things and you might say I'd love to do that but I don't know how Well, we're going to have people as we do every week sitting by a phone right now ready to, to visit with you if you have a question or you need someone to pray with If you'll just call our church, someone will be uh, answering the call this morning. 580-536-4227. If you'll call today, someone is sitting there waiting to pray with you, waiting to encourage you. Or if if you'll call any time this week, we're we're in our offices this week. If you'll call us, we want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. But over these next few minutes... Jeremy is going to come back and he's going to lead us in a song or he's going to sing a song that I want you to, as always, not be entertained by. I, I don't want you to use it as a time to just sit and listen. I want, you, I want you to use it as a time to just hear what God is saying through this. Placing yourself in this song and then coming, coming to commit your life to Christ or coming to seek that that, that, that renewal in your life today. Would you listen to this? Would you praise God during this? Jimmy, if you would. Something in the way you called my name An ordinary fisherman You called me friend and took me in How everything had changed Cause then I knew I'd never be the same came and rescued me I gave up my everything to follow now I know all that I was before 
for won't matter anymore for I am a new man cause I have seen my Savior face to face I recall standing in the courtyard by the fire, the words still ringing in my head. Three times before the break of morn, you would be denied. Yet I saw no judgment in your eyes. I gave up my everything to follow. Now I know all that I was before is dead and it lives no more. For I am a new man, cause I have seen my sin. rolled away my savior you are alive ascended to heaven i know that you will come again that moment i will arise to worship before your throne to bow Then, forever, where I will see my Savior face to face, face to face. Amen. Amen. Oh, my friend, Jesus is coming again. And I pray that you are ready. I pray that you will know that you know that you know. No doubting. But my friend, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, or you're not sure if you made that commitment, man, I want you to pray. I want you to call. I want you to call our church. Let, let somebody visit with you or call this week and, and, and I'll visit with you personally. I mean, I, I'd love to visit with anyone that needs to know. But maybe there's also some other things in your life that you just need some help with. Jesus is the answer for everything that, that we have. Would you come to know him? Man, I hope that uh, hope God's spoken to your heart today. I know he has. And I hope that you're, you've listened and responded. Before we close our service, though, we, we want to share something with you that the First Baptist West is involved in helping feed the people that are in need in Lawton on Tuesday mornings. And uh, we, we fed uh, each time well over almost 400 people, 383, I, I believe is what it was the last time. But I want, we've got a short video because you hear us talking about it, but what I want to do is I want to take a moment, I want you to see what, what goes on over there and be encouraged to perhaps help us in some way be praying for us pray for the m28 ministries and jeff henderson who heads that up so i want you to watch this video and and see what really takes place over at the bridge house guys let's roll that video please hi everybody hi. hey i wanted to give you just a chance at the end of our service this morning uh to be able to see uh the m28 ministries we're out here today looking at this and uh, i know many of you have been faithful in giving you've been faithful in uh, cooking and and uh, just praying for the M28 Ministries. We've been feeding them every Tuesday. 
Well, we want you to take a look at it today and actually see what you've been doing uh, and want to encourage you to continue uh, to help us as we minister uh, to people in need here in Lawton. And you've done a great job, but we actually want to see you, uh, let you take a look at it today. As you see, uh, we're here with Patrick Sheebian. He's uh, been working here today, and I think you were here last week as yes. well, right? And so Patrick is serving, uh, and so I wanted him to just uh, get on here and share with you just a moment what it means to him to get to be doing this and why he's doing it. So Patrick, share with me. Yeah, it's an unbelievable ministry. I think the first week I came out, there was 185 people. Last week, it was like 348. And so it grows every week because more and more people are hearing about this, and more and more people are finding they need food. And so it's just a great ministry. It's opened up citywide. There's no restrictions. People can come and get as much food as they want for their family. And one of the great things that I think about it is the blessings that we receive from the people that are grateful for receiving the food and also asking for prayer. Many of them have sick people in their family or have financial needs. And so they come and they ask for food, but they also ask us to pray for them. That's just a great ministry, something that I didn't realize yeah. going in, that that would be a part of it. And the sad thing is some of the churches are unable to provide workers, and they do this six days a week. So the one thing we need greatly is more volunteer labor. And like our church does Tuesdays, but people can come out and volunteer for any day of the week. Uh, they would welcome that because it takes at least eight people to do this every week. Right. And so to do this six days a week, for so some of the people, they were uh, really struggling with that. So I'm telling you what, there's nothing you can probably do right now while we're in restrictions with COVID-19 as a ministry better than come out here and just help people and, and feed them and provide for their needs. And as you see that they have taken great precautions yes. so that everybody who volunteers is really safe. It's not putting them in a, an adverse environment at all. Yes. In the kitchen, of course, we use gloves and the mask and outside here we use masks. And we also have donations of masks provided by other people that we offer to people as they come in without a mask. And so it's volunteer on their part, but we're trying to make this as safe as we possibly can. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to be in prayer about, again, continuing to support uh, First Baptist West with the M28 ministries that we are being a part of and uh, help with, like with Patrick and come. And Patrick, I appreciate you doing this. Oh, and it's, it's a joy. It was a joy to us come and see you uh, <laughs> standing here even last week, but then again to see you back this week. And so we're excited and uh, God bless you. And thank you okay, for taking you. some time with us. You're, you're so, welcome. so be in prayer about what you can do to help us uh, to support M28 ministries. God bless you. Well, there you have it, folks. This is uh, the M28 Ministries feeding the needy of Lawton. Uh, we want you to see it, be able to, to hear about it, and that we let you know that we really do need the help. They, they have people uh, that do help as much as they can, but as much help as you can give financially, uh, helping with the meals, delivering, and, and especially even coming here and serving. So we hope that you'll be praying about what God can do to use you uh, through First Baptist West and the M20, to help with the M28 Ministries. And we hope that you've had a great day. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So as, as you see, we, we have a great task ahead of us to bear witness to the things of Jesus. 
So we hope that you'll be a part of that with us. Help us out in any way. If there's something that you would like to help us with, call us at the church. We'll, we'll, we'll get you connected. And uh, we always need food. We need servers. Uh, just anything that you can do to help us in any way, we appreciate it. Hey, I want to again thank you for coming and being a part of our service with us today. And something I want to mention very quickly before I, I turn it over to Jeremy and the group and is to talk about something next week. Next week, of course, is Mother's Day, and we can't have services here. Uh, we're not going to have services until May 31st, and then we'll talk a little more about that uh, next week. But we're looking forward to that time. But because we can't do our Mother's Day recognition, we, we usually do baby dedications on that day. Well, we're not going to be able to do that, but what we will have is what we're calling baby recognition. So if you've had a baby that has been born since the, we did our, our Mother's Day service last year, what we want to do is we'll do the baby dedications when we can all get back together. But we're having baby recognition. What we want you to do is if you would send us a couple of pictures, two or three pictures of your baby uh, with the information, the name, and, and when they were born. And then what I would like to also do is ask you if you would put in a snapshot of the entire family. We want to, man, we want to celebrate with you here at First Baptist West because of that wonderful gift God has given you in that baby. So if you will join us by doing that, sending us those pictures, uh, we'd appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, we also end up uh, talking about the M28 Ministries again. We'll be covering that on Facebook Live this Wednesday. Uh, so we want to encourage you to tune in to our Facebook Live at 6.30 on Wednesday. we got some special things in store for you uh, starting this Wednesday night. So God bless you. Thank you for uh, being a part of our service today. I'm going to turn it back over to Jeremy. He's going to share a thought with you, and then they're going to pray and close us out. But God bless you, Brother Jeremy. I want to thank you for joining us in worship today, and I hope that your heart has been drawn close to God and that you've been encouraged in your relationship with God. And I also want to thank this praise team. Keith's up here. He leads us every week, and I get to you know enjoy that from my home uh, every Sunday. And then today I'm doing this because Keith had his wisdom teeth taken out on Friday. So he's up here playing. He's medicated, but he's doing a great job anyway. But I had to come and lead you in worship. And so thanks to this worship team for getting up here every Sunday and leading us in worship. And I hope it encourages you. I hope you'll join us again next week. Let's sing it out. One. So join us on that chorus when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory, we'll sing and shout the victory, we'll sing and shout the victory God bless you